If you are married and your spouse passes away, did you know that you can be subjected to a little thing known as a marriage penalty? If you don't know what that is, and we're going to talk about that today in our Tuesday tips, so stay locked in. Hi, my name is Carson Graves, Certified Financial Planner and President and CEO of the Retirement Education Center. And I want to welcome you once again to our Tuesday Tips, where today we're going to be talking about this thing known as a marriage tax penalty. Now, I know if you're married, you're probably wondering what the heck is this? And if you're unmarried, you're probably thinking, you know, I'm probably glad I didn't get married because I don't want to be subjected to this penalty. But this penalty can be a surprise to many people because they're not prepared for it. So today we're going to talk about how this penalty can materialize in our Tuesday tip. So let's go ahead and jump into our lesson today. So what exactly is this marriage tax penalty that I'm talking about today? Well, basically, this penalty can take place when one spouse passes away and the surviving spouse must switch from a married filing joint status to a single filer status. Ultimately, this can lead to a higher marginal tax rates at lower income levels. So imagine that you're in a lower income level, but you can have higher marginal tax rate when this takes place. As a matter of fact, a surviving spouse federal marginal tax rate could jump anywhere from 12% to as high as 35%, believe it or not. So how can this be? How can this happen? Well, let's just say that both of the spouses own IRAs and they have RMDs due, required minimum distributions that are due from these IRAs when they turn the age of 73. Now, in this video today, in order to make it relevant, we're going to take a look at 2023 tax bracket and we're also going to take a look at 2024 tax brackets as well so you can really see how this marriage tax penalty can come about so as you can see here on the screen we've displayed just at the 10 percent 12 percent and the 22 percent tax bracket for a single filer and a married filing jointly couple for 2023 and we've also displayed what the new filing statuses are for 2024 in those same tax brackets. So let's just take a look at how this can play out. So let's just say in 2023, we had this couple and they were filing as a married filing jointly couple. They had IRA required minimum distributions together jointly of $40,000 that they had to take for that year. And they also had taxable social security income of $42,000. So they had a total income of $82,000 for the year. And when you go ahead and subtract out their standard deduction of $30,700, this is in 2023, and plus they're 65 and older. So for a married couple in 2023, you can add to the $27,700 standard deduction another $3,000. So that's a total of $30,700 that you can take off your taxes in 2023. And so therefore, their taxable income in this particular simple example was $51,300. And as you can see for 2023, income for a married filing jointly couple between $22,000 and $89,450 would have landed them in a 12% tax bracket. Now let's go ahead and fast forward to 2024 and one of the spouses have now passed away. So now the spouse that's surviving must file as a single filer. So now the RMDs, they don't get cut in half. You still have to take money from those accounts. And so you're still taking out, let's just keep it simple, $40,000 for RMDs for this year. But one of the things that did change is that your taxable social security income will go down because you will lose the other spouse's social security income. So now let's just assume that the taxable social security income for this single filer is $25,000. So they have a total income of $65,000 here. Now the standard deduction for an individual in 2024 for a single filer is $14,600. But after you add the $1,550 now for being 65 and older, then now that standard deduction is $16,150 for this person. Now this person's taxable income in 2024 is less than it was in 2023, is $48,450. But if you go over to 2024 for a single filer, the $48,450 would have landed them in a 22% tax bracket. So not only is this person making less income 
it has now been bumped up to a 22% tax bracket for 2024. So what is one of the ways that you might can minimize this tax penalty as a married couple? One of the alternatives that we will always let our clients understand is that they should think about doing Roth conversions. This is where you take a traditional IRA and you convert it to a Roth IRA because when you do that, you will no longer have to take required minimum distributions from that account. You would have paid the taxes early on, and when you get to your required minimum distribution age, you no longer have to even worry about taking those distributions if you do not need them. Another thing that you might can consider if you're very charitable and you don't need those required minimum distributions is to consider a qualified charitable distribution. Because with a qualified charitable distribution, it will give you a tax break by removing any pre-tax dollars from a traditional IRA without creating any taxable income because those funds are going to be heading to a charity. So this is just a couple of ideas that you can do in order to avoid the marriage tax penalty. Thank you again for tuning in to our Tuesday tips. Please understand that these videos are created for educational purposes only and that you should always seek out your own financial advisor, your own tax advisor, and your own attorney regarding your personal situation. Also, if you are looking for an independent fiduciary advisor to help you with these types of complex financial matters, we highly recommend that you utilize the links in our description below and go ahead and schedule a one hour free consultation with us today. And we would also like to hear from you. If you've had a marriage tax penalty happen, let us know what your thoughts are. How did you go about circumventing it? Was it a major surprise to you to know that you were getting less income now that your spouse has passed away, but in a higher tax bracket now? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you found this information to be beneficial, all that we ask is that you subscribe to this channel so it can continue to grow, like this video, and share with others.